Hello, this is my sermon for October 25th, which my denomination celebrates as Reformation Sunday. Um, a little bit of context before I go into the lesson and elements of the day. Um, Reformation Sunday remembers that on October 31st, 1517, Luther nailed the 95 Theses on the church door in Wittenberg. This was um, his, his explanation of abuses um, uh, by the Roman Catholic Church. At this point in time, he thought that the Pope was unaware um, either of many of them or of the error of the ways of many of them. And so um, he was trying to alert the Holy Father as to what was going on. Uh, chief among them was indulgences, um, but this was kind of what kick-started the Protestant Reformation. What I'm going to read for the lesson on this day is Psalm 46, which is the inspiration for Luther's best-known hymn, uh, which is, A Mighty Fortress is Our God. This is Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth should change, though the mountains shake in the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble with its tumult. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of the city, it shall not be moved. God will help it when the morning dawns. The nations are in an uproar, the kingdoms totter. The Lord utters his voice and the earth melts. The Lord of hosts is with us, God of Jacob is our refuge. Come behold the works of the Lord, see what desolations he has brought on earth. He makes war cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow, shatters the spear, burns the shields with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I am exalted among the nations. I am exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Please join me in prayer. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and redeemer. Amen. Um, first off, a little bit of personal context um, for me for this day, and then, but I'm, I'm going to try to connect this, I think, to some of what you might be feeling and some of what we might be feeling as well. Um, for this context in my sermon, um, I'm going to note that it was on Reformation Day, uh, Reformation Sunday, uh, afternoon, evening, in fact, way back in 2006 when I was ordained. Any time when I think of this day, I think of this stole, which my family got me. I think of the uh, rich Lutheran heritage. I think of J.S. Bach on an organ. I think of singing, A mighty fortress is our God. I think of the cries of the Reformation. Sola fide, sola scriptura, sola gratia. gratia. Uh, this shows you that my Latin isn't very good, meaning by faith alone, by scripture alone, by grace alone. A reminder that these are going to be our focus rather than traditions, um, rather than councils, etc. I think of the rich history of Luther and the Reformation. I think of Luther and the German language. In other words, there is a lot that I bring to the table with this day. But when talking with some colleagues about it, one of whom did not grow up Lutheran, and when I say colleagues, I mean other pastors, he talked about how it had always seemed a bit weird to him. To him, um, who came from another Christian tradition, it had seemed like a celebration of a divorce. After all, the Reformation was the splintering or the vulcanization of um, the Christian church because the evangelical church um, succeeded, uh, which is Luther's preferred term 
um, for the denomination that became his, because that movement succeeded. Instead, in the Western world of having the Catholic Church, um, within a century, you were within a couple centuries, you could speak about, Presby um, about Calvinists, Presbyterians, Methodists, Mennonites, um, uh, Puritans, you could speak about um, uh, Anglicans, you could speak about many and diverse groups and factions, Moravians, um, all of these different uh, groups organizing uh, together and against each other and arguing that each group had the sole center on truth, arguing that God's Holy Spirit had blessed this um, denomination or this faction to the exclusion of others. That is a great sorrow and brokenness of the Reformation, the certainty that not only must we be right, but that everyone else must be wrong. I also, on this day, you'll notice I am, you know, dressed in this, um, dressed in my all, which I have not been doing as much lately. I've, I've even got my red clerical shirt on. Um, uh, red is the color for Reformation Sunday. I am dressed more formally than I have been lately. And that is because um, in these times where a lot of what we're doing is uh, Zoom meeting, etc., cetera, um, we do not have to dress as formally. I miss um, getting dressed up uh, for a festival Sunday. I miss uh, occasionally getting dressed up for a fancy dinner. I saw a friend recently um, who uh, shared that they were doing video calls where they had a very formal top and they had pajama pants that they're wearing for the bottom, figuring uh, that for Zoom calls, um, for video conferencing, you could, you could be dressed however you want. And if I'm being honest, while I have formal um, trousers on, I'm wearing sneakers because I find sneakers comfier. What I mean by all of this is that this is a reflection of the ways that our world has changed. This is a reflection of the way that we... Um, that the world seems to be shaking around us. This is a reflection that we might hear in Psalm 46, which is, again, the inspiration for a mighty fortress is our God. Its waters roar and foam. Um, therefore, we will not fear, though the earth should change, though the mountains shake in the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble with its tumult. So what am I to say to you? What is the Holy Spirit moving through me to say to you on this Reformation Sunday in 2020? What words of comfort, hope, and promise might I give you on this day? What can I say? After all, if it, it feels right now like our world is shaking. It feels like there is a river of anger and discontent roaring through us, roaring through all of us. Though the church, Christ's church, stands secure, our congregation and many other congregations face uncertainty. Though we know that Christ's eternal church shall not be moved, we recognize that there are changes for us and changes for many in our congregation. Faith Lutheran Church, after all, has seen many sisters and brothers who have joined the church tri triumphant, which is another way of saying that they have died. Faith Lutheran Church, after all, um, is uh, trying to find different ways to gather in the outside and recognizing that as the days grow shorter and colder, that that is becoming more difficult. Of course, people at Faith are recognizing the blessing that many um, that we have homes, and so people at Faith are still working to provide um, to provide for others, both by um, making quilts, by working to feed others through the gleaners or through fish, or through helping to support um, agencies 
uh, uh, through programs such as Laundry Love, which provides laundry for those in need, um, through the Fish Food Drive, through quilting, um, through uh, giving to shelters and others. We are recognizing that even though um, our church building might not be open, that we have a responsibility to care for those who do not have a place to get, come in from the cold at night. We have been praying and continue to pray for all of the leaders in this world, in this country, in our state, and in our towns. We continue to pray for God's Holy Spirit to go through them. And we continue to pray uh, for peace. We continue to pray for each of them and for each of us to see the light of God um, shining through the eyes of everyone that they see and to remind us of all the people who our eyes might miss. On this Reformation Sunday, we might be remembering a divorce um, from the Roman Catholic Church, but I also think of this in terms of a liberating Rather than having a, a conduit of the Pope or a priest that our prayers are to go through, we have the opportunity, each of us, to join in faith, to, be our, um, to pray, to study Scripture. The gifts of the Reformation are the reminder that there were ways that the church needed to reform, and that continues to be true. The church continuously is changing because humanity is continually being molded by the one who is with us through the tumult and through the streams. If we remain still, if we remain unchanging, we will wither and die. But Christ, God, and the Holy Spirit are unchanging. Amidst a world that often seems tumultuous, that often seems um, changing, that often seems going from one thing to another, amidst that world, God is our center place, our fortress of unchanging love, compassion, and mercy. On this Reformation Day, we are not so much celebrating a divorce as we are celebrating that though so much in our world might change, God is constant. God is sure. God's sure love for you is a bulwark against any trouble. Amen.